How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install a power meter onto your SRAM RED or SRAM Force crank set. And this will work with both SRAM Force or RED one by or two by crank sets as long as it is the right BCD or bolt circle diameter for your crank set. Now it's a pretty straightforward process. What I like about this specific system is that instead of having to get a different left crank arm or, or doing something a little bit more involved like that, all you gotta do is replace the spider with this guy right here, the cork power meter. So all we gotta do is take out the old spider, put the new spider in, and that's it. It's a pretty straightforward job. Now, for those of you who haven't bought a power meter yet, this really is the best upgrade you can do to your bike if you wanna be serious about training using heart rate, using speed, they're just not really accurate measures of the effort you're putting into cycling. Power though is relevant regardless of whether you're going on a steep uphill, a shallow uphill, flat, whatever. It'll give you an accurate representation of how hard you're working and it's a great way to actually improve your ability in terms of riding faster. So if you haven't done any other upgrades but you wanna get faster as a rider, I would start here. This is what's gonna make you faster. With all that being said, let me show you the exact tools you're gonna need to do this entire process. Then I'll show you the process of doing so. Uh, and that's it. Tools we're gonna need. First off, we're gonna need to remove the crank from the bike if you haven't done so yet. Uh, for the SRAM force crank sets I'm working on today, that's an eight millimeter hex. So you could use something like a regular L key. You could use a T handle such as this. Something with a little bit of leverage, something a little bit longer. Uh, and beefier because these are gonna be on there 54 Newton meters pretty tight and so you're gonna need a little bit of leverage. You could even go with a breaker bar with a hex socket such as this. As long as it's eight millimeter, it's gonna work for you, okay? Once we're done with the job, we're gonna need to put the crank back on at the correct 54 Newton meters and so a torque wrench that will go up to 54 Newton meters is also important to have. You can probably get away with, you know, just torquing it down pretty snug, but I don't like to mess around with bike stuff. I don't want anything falling off. So proper torque specs are always recommended. Now, once we have the crank set off the bike, we're gonna need to replace the old spider with the power meter spider. In order to do that, we're just gonna need two different Torx keys. We're gonna need a T30 and a T20. Now, unfortunately this uh, Park Tool Y Torx tool only goes T30, T25, T15. So we're not gonna get that T20 on here. So I'm gonna actually have to use my, um, my L keys here. It is though also helpful to have some Torx sockets if you do a lot of work on bikes. Uh, a set like this from, from Nico, which is a, a, a solid brand for, for tools, uh, is gonna run you about 15 bucks. And uh, you know it's really useful, especially for, for torquing stuff down properly. So having the right sockets for your torque wrench obviously it's gonna help you out. So if you don't have one of those, I would recommend picking one of those up at some point because they will make your life a little bit easier for torquing stuff down properly. So either way, Torx keys, T30 and T20, Torx sockets potentially, and then obviously a Torx wrench. This is my Feta Mariposa Torx wrench set over here. Uh, and this is gonna get us. Alex, and, and I mean this with all the kindness in the world, but you're a complete klutz a nice torque wrench set like this Effetto Mariposa one that I have here. This will allow you to properly torque the bolts down. You obviously don't need multiple torque wrenches. I like having a small one for kind of those low torque applications. And then obviously a bigger one, like an automotive one works well for, you know, crank bolts and bottom brackets and stuff like that. Let's head over to the bike, get the pedals off, get the crank off, and we'll come back to the bench and get the rest of the job done. All right, so the first thing we need to do is remove the pedal from the crank set just to make our lives a little bit easier. So we're just going to remove this. So let's get that removed. Now, if you're working with a SRAM rear derailleur like this GX Eagle one I have here, you're going to want to place it in the sort of lock position. There's a little bit, there's a little lock button right down here. You can see here a little lock sign. This allows you to remove the chain easily. We're just gonna put some slack on the chain because this is gonna allow us to remove the crank set more easily. And then back at the front of the bike here, we'll see that the chain is now slack. And I'm just going to pull it off the chain ring and put it down behind like that. Now to remove these SRAM crank sets, they use essentially a captured bolt. It's sort of like a built-in crank puller, which is a pretty cool system. Essentially, there's a bolt inside, which you would tighten, right? You'd put righty-tighty to tighten the uh, 
cranks it on, but when you loosen it, it'll pull against or kind of push against this outside bolt, this kind of cover right here, and it'll pull the entire crank set off. So all we need to do is just loosen the bolt. At first, it'll go loose for a second. It'll go, you know, there'll be no resistance almost, but then as you start to loosen it more, you'll meet some resistance here, and then it'll go loose again. That's because it has now been pushed off. And then you just keep going, keep going, and it just pops off like that. So pretty straightforward. All right, now we don't actually need to remove the other half of the crank set from the bike if you don't want to, but now is a good time to make sure that you have some grease on your uh, on your bearing seals, right? So, you know, pulling off all these spacers, peeling off the little bearing dust cover and just kind of re-greasing the outside of them would not be a bad idea since we have it apart. So while you're doing this job, that's a nice little additional thing to do. But let's go back to the bench and install our power meter. All right, so now we have the crank set off the bike and we can go ahead and proceed with the process of taking out the old spider and replacing it with our power meter spider. Now, the first thing we wanna do is remove the chain ring from the crank set. That's gonna make our lives just a little bit easier. So uh, this uses a T30 Torx and these are gonna be on here, I believe 12, yeah, 12 Newton meters. So they're gonna be on not super tight, but you know, a little bit. So, you know, you may need to kind of put a little bit of force into them but they will come off. Loosen these guys up. Red locker on the bolts, that is normal. Don't worry, you didn't break anything. Once these are loose, you should be able to actually get them off pretty easily. And on the other side, these little kind of dust caps, as you see here, these are sort of what actually holds on the uh, the bolt from the other side. As you can see here, they have a threaded part right there. Now we need to get the T20 Torx bolts off of this crank arm here to remove the spider from the crank arm. These should only be on here about four Newton meters, so they should be relatively easy to remove. And so we're just gonna work our way around removing these somewhat evenly. So then we can just move all these little Torx bolts. And once we get these guys all removed, the spider will just pop off like this and we are left with the bare crank arm. Now, there may be some dirt, maybe some old grease kind of built up around here. So not a bad idea to get, you know, a clean microfiber and just kind of go around and clean off the surface. We wanna make sure this is nice and clean before we reinstall just to prevent any problems down the road. All right, so the last thing I wanna do here before I reassemble everything and reinstall the bike is that I know there are some weight weenies out there just like me who might be wondering, isn't this gonna add weight to my bike? And the answer is yes, unfortunately. Obviously, I think the benefits of having a power meter will far outweigh any detriments of added weight, as much as it pains me to say that. However, for those of you interested, let's do a quick weight comparison between the old Spider and the new one with the power meter just to see how much of a weight penalty you're taking for installing this power meter. So the original Spider comes in at 63.5 grams, 63.5 grams, okay? Whereas the new one with the power meter, and this is with the dust cover and the battery installed, comes in at 160.8 grams. So you're looking at about a 97 gram penalty, about 100 grams. You know, that is a good amount of weight, 100 grams is a lot of weight, but you're really gonna see the benefits in your training with a power meter. It's, I, in my opinion, it is definitely worth the weight penalty. And it's not necessarily rotational weight, I me mean, it is on the crank, but you're going to benefit more from shedding weight in your wheels than you are in your crank. So ultimately, this is a worthwhile upgrade, even though there is about a 100 gram weight penalty for doing so. That being out of the way for the weight weenies, we can now go ahead and install everything together, put it back on the bike, and we're good to go. Now that we have our crank arm and our power meter ready to go together, we do wanna do one last thing just for safety. And that is we wanna sort of grease the interface here where the power meter is going to connect to the crank arm. The reason being is that because these are both aluminum, you could potentially get them sort of getting stuck together, essentially is what it is, right? Um, when you have two like metals, you always wanna put a little bit of grease. So we're just gonna place a thin layer of grease just sort of around this kind of interface here just right along there. I'm just gonna use a little grease brush here and kind of work it in there. There we go. Now we can go ahead 
and attach our power meter to our crank arm. So the way it works is this little battery cover here. So if you remove this, you have a secondary battery cover. This is sort of just the dust shield. And if you twist this off like this, I'm not gonna go all the way, that's how you remove the battery. So if you bought this used, you wanna make sure you have a battery in there or you might wanna replace the battery. If you bought it new, make sure the battery's in there. That little part here with the battery cover, that points towards the back of the crank arm. So it interfaces like this. Now we're just going to take our T20s and we're just going to wind those down into here. When you're attaching a sort of kind of radial thing, so like a thing about lug nuts on a car or you know six bolt rotors on a bike, when you wanna retorque everything down, you wanna make sure to do so kind of in a star kind of crisscross pattern. You don't wanna just go in a circle because if you do that, you're gonna sort of have more torque on one side until you get back around and that could prevent it from you know being properly attached. You could put sort of undue pressure on one side. First kind of wind them down, you know, finger tight all the way around. Okay, now that I have these all snug, now we wanna go ahead and torque them down to the full spec. And so essentially what we wanna do is kinda of go in a crisscross pattern. So I go from this one to this one, to that one, this one, this one, this one, this one, that one, kinda of like that, right? Crisscrossing to make sure you evenly torque it down rather than just going all at once on one side and risking putting it on unevenly or again, putting undue pressure or unnecessary pressure on any part of it. So we're just gonna go down to four Newton meters. All right, and there we go. We have a properly torqued power meter on our crank arm here. I'm just gonna wipe off any sort of excess grease that's on the back here because we don't wanna attract any additional dirt. So now we're gonna go ahead and reattach our chain ring to the crank set. We're just going to slide it through, rotate it until we find the proper orientation. So we're gonna really go on in one way until we have it properly aligned like this. Note that one of these caps has a little bit of an indentation, as you can see right here, compared to this one here. Right, one of these has a little indentation, one doesn't. The one with the indentation is the one that's gonna fit right here where the crank arm would sort of interfere with it. So make sure you put that one in the correct location. And we're just gonna start that one so we have something holding them together. And then we can just work our way around installing all of these. Okay, so we have our four chain ring bolts now snug down and we need to torque them down now to 12 Newton meters. And again, we're gonna work in sort of a star shape. It's only four, but we're not gonna go all at once. We're gonna go here and then we're gonna get this one kind of equally snug. And then once they're all evenly tight, we're then gonna go ahead and go all the way down to spec. Again, that is 12 Newton meters. Rechecking our first bolt, should still be at 12, which it is, and we are done. So now we can go ahead and reinstall this guy onto the bike. All right, now real quick, before we reinstall the crank set onto the bike, we wanna do one more thing, and that is we want to download the SRAM app, okay? Cork is owned by SRAM now, and the uh, the sort of firmware and the update software is all run through this app. Now you could actually just go and attach this to the bike, connect it to your head unit, and just go like that, and that would be totally fine. You can calibrate through your head unit, usually you know your Garmin, your Wahoo, whatever. However, the app is what allows you to update the firmware periodically, and so it's a good idea to just get that set up right away. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna again, go into the SRAM app. I already have the other things, the, uh, the axis uh, derailleur and uh, shifters on here. If you don't have the app already, then download it, make an account, so on and so forth. And if you can see right here, you're gonna click this little search button, click that, and it's gonna find your power meter right away, as long as it has a battery in there. So click that, connect, and give it a few seconds to connect. And now it says, there it is, battery's good. We're gonna click add to bike. And we're gonna click my Stigmata, which is the bike I'm currently using. And there we go, it's added to the bike. Uh, now that we are in the, um, in the app, we can calibrate it, we can update the firmware, we can do all that good stuff. I'm gonna install it first and then do the calibration, but it's a good idea to get this done and you can do it with 
the power meter off the bike so you don't have to worry about it later. So let's go install this on the bike. All right, so now to install the crank set back on the bike, it's just the inverse of removal. So we're going to line up the crank set with the other side here, make sure that we're evenly attached over there. Then we're just gonna grab our eight mil and we're just going to slowly wind this down just like that. Then we're going to grab our torque wrench and we have this guy set to 54 Newton meters. And we are just going to torque this guy down. There we go, 54 Newton meters. We can then go ahead and replace our chain. We can take our derailleur out of the lock mode. And then last thing we need to do is just reinstall our pedal. And there we go. We've got power meter crank set all installed on the bike. So that's it, everyone. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was informative. Thank you again so, so much for watching. If you haven't done so yet, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, all that good stuff. Drop me a comment down below. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next one.